Right, hello, Jess here from Musical Mold Looker. And we've got our final stage, the bouquet, or sometimes known as peacock pattern. So I will go through and do all of the previous stages and add on one final stage, which will be using what's known as a bouquet comb. This is because it's got very specific alignment of teeth to create this pattern. Again, another extremely popular pattern in the 19th century and one of the most popular today, I would say. Um, it's a, an extremely popular pattern in any colourway. Um, it is a lovely pattern to produce and it just looks brilliant. There are a few variations. Um, and those are all created by doing um, a slightly different stage before you do the, the bouquet comb. So you can do a shell pattern where you use the bouquet comb straight over a gelgit. So you don't you don't use the non pareil comb, you just do it straight over a gelgit and that gets a shell pattern. If you do your non pareil from bottom to top instead of top to bottom, you'll end up with what's called gets called rather boringly a reverse bouquet. Or what I prefer, a frog foot pattern. If you do instead of an on pareil, you do a chevron pattern, which is like a gelgit but on a much smaller scale, much tighter scale. You're looking at um, uh, uh, chevrons which are only about 10 mil in width approximately, then you do a bouquet over that. If the, if the chevron's been done top to bottom, then you get a fleur-de-lis pattern. Come on, a bit more yellow on. Oops. Too much paint on. There we are, never mind. Um, and if you do a chevron from side to side and then do your bouquet on top you will end up with what I've seen called by Galen Berry who's a, a very inventive brilliant American marbler he calls it a tornado it does sort of look like a tornado pattern right put a load of purple on top of that press the yellow a bit So this area will come out with yellow, orange, purple and green and not so much of the blue and red because obviously there's a couple of tiny little bits of blue and red in there but that yellow was such a large blob that it's pushed all the other colours out the way that came before it, which in this case was the red and the blue. So if you do that last, and your last colour, you end up with a great big blotch with your last colour, which is not particularly attractive. Easy to do though. If you're rushing or you forget um, how much paint you've got on your brush, then you can easily do. Alright, so we'll do our Galgit, top to bottom. Nice smooth movements, and then side to side. something interesting that you can see is a tiny bit of red paint that's come up and is slightly marring the pattern. Doesn't matter too much. So we shall be combing on from here. So there's our gel get done. 
Next up, our non pareil. Final stage, now this is our very special bouquet comb and you can see the teeth are offset equilateral triangles and we're going to do a side to side movement. And you can see the bouquet is forming. As we go down. And there we are. That is a rainbow bouquet. Or rainbow peacock. Right, let's get the sheet and get it printed. Right, again, I'm going to be very gentle. One smooth movement. Don't want to trap air bubbles and spoil the pattern. If you trap an air bubble, you end up with a great big white circle or whatever the colour of paper is where the paint hasn't taken because the air just sits underneath and stops the, pa the paint from getting to the paper. Right, and there we go. There is our rainbow bouquet. Oh, I hope you've enjoyed my little walk through the stages of a pattern showing you four different patterns in fact actually they can all be the stages just towards one pattern so you can see the paint once I've taken that paint out the paint keeps moving taking up the surface tension what I'm doing is just using this cheaper paper just to clean up the tray absorb the paint and what I'm going to be doing, see that there's an air bubble trapped, that shows you very well. So in the case of this, I can just press like that, this doesn't matter. You can't really do that on a main sheet, um, the pattern ends up being marred, so you end up being a bit stuck. But these sheets that I use taking the, print, taking the paint that's left over off the tray, um, I'm going to end up putting together some little packs, papier mache for kids with lots of these strips of paper. So they've got lots of lovely colour on them. Perfect papier mache, nice and cheap paper and I'll be um, getting rid of a load of these literally just for postage just so that um, it's as much zero waste as I can manage and that um, some little kids get a chance to have some nice colourful paper to play with. Right, well I hope you've enjoyed my demonstrations. Please go and have a look at my Instagram page, Winscombe Warbler, for more reveal clips and videos of other patterns that I've marbled. I will be adding more in the future my camera mount broke for my phone. I had to wait to get another one. Now that I've got another one, I can arrange to do a new setup now. I'm just skimming the top, taking off the paint that's left to make it nice and clean because if you try and marble when that paint is there, then that paint will get onto your print. And if you are perhaps changing colors, if you wanted to do a pattern that had no red in it, let's say, if you don't clean the tray properly, you're bound to get some whispers of red in there somewhere. Right, there we are. That's it for now. I'll hopefully see you very soon. Bye.